uh, area to display the work, as you would see, uh, as you show some of the uh, paintings around the wall. Okay. Uh, I saw one that was very interesting to me. I think you entitled it, A Sophisticated Ladies. Tell me something about that. Well, you can look at, if you, if you view that painting, you can see the air, the expression on those three ladies' faces. Uh, they look sophisticated. They have their heads in the air and they are strutting. That's why I named them sophisticated ladies. So did you have anything that you were drawing it from or this just came out of your mind? It's just out of my mind. I, I wanted to present three ladies and I wanted to use vivid colors. I used acrylics in that uh, painting. Uh, it's about a uh, three foot by eight foot painting uh, of those ladies. And uh, it's very expressive of their sophistication. Okay. So also, um, you have one uh, that's abstract art. Um, tell me some of that abstract art there. <laughs> well, abstract art is intrinsic art. It, it's art that expresses feelings of the artist uh, of a subject. And it's not expressed in ordinary terms. Uh, what I mean, uh, it's not expressed the way you see it with your eyes, but rather how you see it with your heart and with your mind. And so you use some elements that are not common uh, to the average viewer of the art. And I think the artist is not necessarily trying to uh, satisfy the viewer as much as he's satisfying himself and expressing himself. So he uses abstract means to do so. There are some things you just can't, you can't express uh, feelings in using ordinary means. What are the different mediums that you do in terms of artwork? Well, I, I work in pencil, ink, oil, acrylic, uh, charcoal, uh, all mediums I, I work in and I try to expand and work in all forms of art uh, from cubism to abstract realism I'm trying to find my, my place in the art world. And so I'm all across the board right now. Okay. So tell us something, you have one uh, picture, you have, uh, I think it's Edge for your home of the 10 governors and you have a gentleman standing in front of it. How did, how did that come about? Uh, about 10 years ago, I was coming from Greenville to Edgeville and I saw these four gentlemen standing on the corner in the square there in Edgeville. And I stopped, I happened to have my camera with me, and I stopped and asked them, could I snap a picture of them? And they granted that request, and I did. So I put the picture away for about five or six years, didn't do anything with it. And one day I, I, I picked it up, looked at it, and I said, let me go on and paint this picture. So I did a watercolor of them. And it's significant in that it's in the square. It has some history behind it. You can see the building pointing out the 10 governors uh, in, in Edgefield that have come out of Edgefield. That painting is on the wall of one of the restaurants there in Edgefield. So it's, it's a pretty good painting. I, I'm proud of that painting. I took it over to Edgefield and, and gave a copy to, uh, showed a copy to the gentleman that was still living in, out of those four uh, that, uh, that I painted. Since you, since you <coughs> mentioned history, let's, let's speak about the one picture that you have, I Have a Dream with a young, man, a young uh, white girl and a young white guy, or maybe just the opposite, a walking hand in hand. Tell me something about that picture. Yes, uh, I was in D.C. on the mall about eight years ago, and those kids were walking on the mall. They were in a group of, of other children, but they were lagging behind. And I, I took my camera and snapped just those two because uh, it was just an interesting snapshot to take. I put that away until much later, and then I went back and painted it. But what I did, I improvised on that painting. I put I Have a Dream in there because it signified that to see those two children walking together, holding hands, and not perturbed by what was going on around them that grown folks usually get into. So I thought it was a quite interesting picture. Uh, uh, school system, uh, one of the schools in town bought that picture, and I think they have it hanging uh, uh, in the school, now John Millich School. 
as well as I have one. Yeah, and you have one. You <laughs> have one. You bought one. one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about history here, and I want you to, to share with us a picture that doesn't really exist if we're talking about history. We're talking about Thur Strong Thurman, uh, Senator Strong Thurman, and his daughter. Yes. You have that picture, and you're taking that picture, and you put the two of them together. Yes. Why did you do that, and how did that happen? Well, that happened uh, several years ago. A couple of friends of mine, uh, Alonzo Alexander and uh, William Griffin, we were sitting in the house talking about the 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 daughter uh, episode. It was on headline news, national news, and what have you, about uh, Strong Thurman's daughter and the re revelation of this. And uh, Alonzo uh, said to me, he said, "Grady, you know one thing." you ought to paint a picture of Strong Thurman and his daughter together. As you know, there was never a public picture of them shown that I know of. So I started doing some research, looking up some pictures, some photos of Senator Thurman and uh, Mrs. Williams. And I made a composition of the two of them and improvised on the picture and came out with an oil painting, a uh, three by four foot oil painting of the two of them. I took it to Edgefield, Mrs. Williams saw it, and she was delighted uh, with it. And uh, I, one day I hope to take it over to uh, South Carolina State and uh, show it to them. Uh, we'll be right back, you're, you're watching Comcast Community Concerns. We're gonna take a commercial break. For more than eight years, Easy Ride of Augusta has been providing affordable and convenient service to the Atlanta airport. A fleet of five vans and eight experienced drivers provide you with a reliable and worry-free ride. With 34 trips every week, it's easy to book the trip that fits your schedule. Join the thousands of satisfied customers. Visit EasyRideOfAugusta.com or call 706-860-4900 to reserve your next trip to the Atlanta airport. For quick and friendly service, come to Quickway Florist. Call our professional staff to inquire about beautiful fresh arrangements, seasonal bouquets, centerpieces, and more. Let us help customize your designs. Or stop by and purchase one of our prearranged bouquets. For all of your floral needs, call Quickway Florist. Flowers for all occasions. Located at 1335 Druid Park Avenue in Augusta. Quickway Florist. Do you need your computer repaired or your office network maintained? Call certified experts at 4T's Computers. They have the largest staff of certified technicians in the CSRA, with hundreds of computers repaired monthly and multiple maintenance contracts with small businesses and organizations. All work is guaranteed, and our motto is, do it right the first time. We have the largest selection of refurbished computers in the area. 4T's has two locations to serve you, 592 Bobby Jones Expressway across from Home Depot and Windsor Plaza next to the post office on Peach Orchard Road. It's the perfect way to get your morning going on 96.3 KISS FM with Fats and Cher. And I've got your KISS and Tell Entertainment. He's got your classic throwback, so much more. Set your clock and join us weekday morning 6 to 10, only on 96.3 KISS FM or on your computer at 96.3KISSFM.com. Welcome back. Once again, you're watching Comcast Community Concern. We're at Gray Abrams Art Studio and Gallery, and we're just talking about the different nature of art, the different medium that Mr. Abrams have here in his art studio gallery. Uh, you also have a standard, you have a Mona Lisa. Um, why was that of interest? Because it's so commonplace. Why did you decide to do one? Well, you know, ever since I was really interested in art, you've, I've heard about the Mona Lisa and the intrigue of the painting by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, and I guess when I got a chance and opportunity to paint it, I just painted it. It's a very interesting picture, half smile, the smile was supposed to be the, the focus of that picture. Quite interesting, in the, in the Louvre uh, Museum in Paris, this, this picture is not as large as it here in my museum, uh, my gallery. I, I chose to paint it larger than the original painting just so that I could uh, express it better. I, I, the larger the pictures are with me, the better I can express uh, what I'm trying to express. So this is uh, just an intriguing picture that caught my eye. You also have one of uh, James Brown meeting uh, former President uh, Richard Nixon. 
a very troubling time for Mr. Brown. Why do you say that? <laughs> well, you know, this picture has some history behind it because back in the early 70s, when uh, President Nixon was running for his, I think, his second term, uh, Jane, he got the endorsement of James Brown to the chagrin of black people because uh, blacks at that time were going with Hubert Humphrey and they couldn't understand why would James Brown endorse uh, Richard Nixon, but he did. And uh, President Nixon invited him and his father and Mr. Bobbitt, his manager, as you can see, to the White House. Uh, and he gave him some kind of proclamation and uh, for his support in that election. Okay. We also have one of our Tiger Woods and his first caddy that we know as introduce him to the world. We're talking about Fluffy. Yes, yes. Fluff, Fluff was with Tiger when he won, won his first Masters uh, here in Augusta. And uh, I, I had to do a picture of Tiger and Fluff together, even though Fluff is not caddying for Tiger at the present time. Uh, I thought uh, Fluff was there in the beginning and he should be recognized for that, if nothing else. And that's the reason I painted that picture. It's a three by four foot painting. Okay. You also have one of uh, Hootie Johnson, Phil Nicholson and company. What's that? Yes, when Phil won his first major, I thought that was, and it was history. He had been trying so hard. And uh, that picture, a photo appeared in the Augusta Chronicle that Monday after the Masters. And I saw it and I said, boy, this, uh, this, this would make a good painting. And so I started painting it. It took me about uh, a month or so to paint it. And uh, I'm proud of that painting also. You also have one here with the whole block on Brawl Street. Yes. Tell me something about that. What block is that actually? That's the 1100 block of Broad Street. It's between 12th and 11th Streets. Uh, I went down on Broad Street when there were a few cars parked and took segments of that block. I took it in series and then I put the pictures together, the photos together, and painted from that. And so that's the whole block, 1100 block, of the, I guess you would call it the north side of Broad Street. Mm -hmm. So if someone wanted to visit your, your studio and gallery, how would they go about doing that? How would you make arrangements for that? Well, all they need to do is just call me at 706-855-5968 and uh, let me know when they want to come. It's open for private showings uh, any time between 7, 8, 9 o'clock. Uh, I'll be here. So you're also listed in the phone book on the Grady Abrams, correct? I'm listed as Grady Abrams, not Grady Abrams Art Studio and Gallery. I don't have a... Uh, a commercial in the phone book for the studio. Okay. Well, let's switch gears a little bit. You also, I mean, may mention and introducing you much earlier that you also have a, a community active background as well as a political background. Tell me something about the climate of Augusta right now, in your mind. Are we positioned for growth? Uh, are we positioned to, 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 to back up, per se, to retrogress? Are we in a position to progress? I, I think it has potential. Uh, you can't eliminate potential, even though things may seem dark. Augusta has great potential. It's just a matter of getting the players in place who can work together to bring about that potential to capitalize on it. Uh, I think going through a metamorphosis, a change. Uh, I can see a change in, in the political atmosphere as far as talk radio is concerned right now. It's not as acidic as it was a couple of months ago. It seemed to be that people are coming and talking with some sense now and talking about something that's constructive, which is a pleasant uh, uh, surprise, and, uh, but it's welcome. And it in this community. We need to be talking about constructive things rather than how to tear something down. Okay. Also, I'd like to mention here, uh, for the record, uh, uh, Gray Abrams now is a resident of Columbia County, but he also has property still in Richmond County. He has children or kids that are still in Richmond County as well, as well as grandkids. Right. So he still has a vested interest in Richmond County. Absolutely. More so than here in Columbia County because that's my birthplace 
Richmond County. I was born on Angle Street, right where the Medical College of George is built. Before they, that went urban renewal, I was living in that area. Then I moved up to 10th Street behind the Paramount uh, nightclub. I lived there for many years. And then I moved uh, in some apartments and finally ended up here in Columbia County because my wife had a lot here in Columbia County and we decided to build here. So tell me something, when you saw right there at 10th Street, almost 10th, and, and we used to be going at, yes. Walking Boulevard, yes. how do you feel when you go through that now, how, how wide and expanse that street is right there? Because I'm off of 9th Street slash James Brown Boulevard, and almost breathtaking for me personally. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was sad to leave that area because I spent a, a large part of my life uh, there from 61 to in the 80s. Uh, but now looking at the board of health, uh, I'm not... Uh, uh, you know, giving up our property so that something better can be put there, like the Board of Health that can serve the community, I, I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that whole area and how the development is coming along. Okay. Uh, we're going to be right back. We're going to take a commercial break. For quick and friendly service, come to Quickway Florist. Call our professional staff to inquire about beautiful fresh cut arrangements, seasonal bouquets, centerpieces, and more. Let us help customize your funeral designs, or stop by and purchase one of our prearranged bouquets. For all of your floral needs, call Quickway Florists, flowers for all occasions, located at 1335 Druid Park Avenue in Augusta. Quickway Florists. Hey, baby. Listen, I know our last call didn't go so well, but great news. I'm now calling you on my new Comcast Digital Voice home phone service. Sean. I told you never to call me again. Yeah, I know, but that was my old service. Okay. Sean. Th th this is my new Comcast Digital Voice, so solid. I'm hanging up now. Your phone calls won't change. They'll just cost less. Comcast Digital Voice. It's Comcasting. Do you need your computer repaired or your office network maintained? Call the certified experts at Fortis Computers. They have the largest staff of certified technicians in the CSRA, with hundreds of computers repaired monthly and multiple maintenance contracts with small businesses and organizations. All work is guaranteed, and our motto is, do it right the first time. We have the largest selection of refurbished computers in the area. Fortis has two locations to serve you, 592 Bobby Jones Expressway across from Home Depot and Windsor Plaza next to the post office on Peach Orchard Road. It's the perfect way to get your morning going on 96.3 Kiss FM with Fats and Cher. And I've got your Kiss and Tell Entertainment. He's got your classic throwback, so much more. Set your clock and join us weekday morning 6 to 10, only on 96.3 Kiss FM or on your computer at 96.3kissfm.com. Welcome back. Um, Grady, before we went to a commercial break, we had begotten, begotten, began to get involved in talking about politics. Give me your impression of Mayor Copenhagen in, in all of two years' time. Well, I don't know him personally. <clears throat> I never met him, but what I have observed, he seems to be a person who wants this city to move forward. And uh, anyone in that position who wants to make progress, all I have to say is good riddance. I mean, to those who are criticizing him and to embrace him as a mayor who's trying to make things happen in this community. So far, I think he's done a good job, and uh, I endorse him uh, just as anyone else who has observed uh, the things that he's done to this community and for this community. Let's um, talk about the T Center vote that Ms. Beard cast, not so much about the other side of it, just in terms of the vote that Ms. Beard cast. Do you think she made the right vote, and why was this, and if she did, uh, why was that important? If she did not make the right vote, why was it important that she made the wrong vote? Well, she made a progressive vote, and I think that is right within itself. Uh, it's no sense in voting against something if you don't have any alternatives uh, to put on the table. Uh, <clears throat> Mrs. Bitt is a, is a business-minded woman. She's a woman who's been in this community for a long time. She's been in the education system. And I don't think she's the type of person that would make a decision without any thought behind it and a good decision for this community. I think it is a good uh, decision. Uh, the inner city is going to uh, benefit from that decision. 
And I think the city as a whole is going to benefit from it. So it's a good decision, yeah. and, I, and I applaud her for making it. It's great that you mentioned that because as I asked you the question, I thought about it in terms of more of the T Center because the T Center was front run on that, but actually there was a benefit across the board in terms of the inner city benefit and the total about $37.5 million. Absolutely. Uh, as, as well in terms of that. So it was, it was, a, it was a, probably one of the most phenomenal votes that I could think of in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I think about it, I've been trying to reflect. And I mean, maybe you can go back further than I can, but can yeah. you think about a vote that had that kind of impact in quite some time? Well, well, the, the, the condominiums that are going to be built down on Six and Rental, it was a pivotal vote uh, to get that done. So Ms. Beard has been on the forefront uh, in, in, in voting to move the city forward. And uh, I, I just think she needs to be commended for doing that. We need four more commissioners who think uh, forward as she does. So should she expect criticism when you do the right thing? Oh, absolutely. Anyone who does right, you're going to get criticism. Uh, people are prone to criticize things that are going well. There are some people who just cannot operate unless there's turmoil. And uh, I'm just so glad that Mrs. Beard came out of that uh, quagmire and did the right thing by voting to move the city forward. Uh, you mentioned in terms of we may need four more commissions eventually, but right now we have upon us coming up in November, uh, we have five seats up uh, in terms of for the city of Augusta. We have Andy Cheeks, seat and Marion Williams Cheeks that are, their terms have expired, but across the board there are five seats. Even though you personally don't have a, a vote in Richmond County, you have a vested interest once again because your children are there, your grandchildren, you're a, a landholder uh, there as well. As you and your family sit down and be talking about casting a vote, what would you encourage them to be looking for in a candidate? Uh, a person who, who can think, a person who understands the political process and understands that uh, you don't get anything by grandstanding, but rather working together with people, you got to have six votes. And uh, you have to learn how to work together with people in order to accomplish the six votes that you need to get anything done. I'm looking for that person who's willing to compromise, who's willing to use the political process, who's not looking to be grandstanding, to be showy, uh, not to take uh, things that don't go his or her way personally, but understand this is a process that everybody's in there trying to get something for their constituents. And there are times that they can all work together for the benefit of this community as a whole. I'm looking for that person who can do that, not the person who can stand alone and say that I don't play politics, I don't make deals, I don't do this. Well, that person is in the wrong uh, uh, venue if he doesn't play politics and you're in a political situation. You can't do anything but play politics. Well, we're talking about in, in, in our community, when I say our community here, I'm making reference directly to the black community, which is our community. Mm -hmm. um, when you used to use a buzzword, you said be willing to compromise, define compromise. That's something we seem to be struggling with. Well, you come to the table asking for one thing, but willing to give up uh, getting everything you want in order to walk away from the table with something. And, and that's compromising. You know, you don't get everything you want at a, at a bargaining table. But uh, to be able to walk away, to compromise and, and walk away with something. Or uh, maybe I promise for the next time when you bring up an issue, we'll be on your side on this the next time. Vote with us on this. That's compromising. That's giving up uh, your reticence to, to work with what you want because you can't get it. Give it up and, and wait for the next time where you can get someone to vote with you. Uh, we, aren't, we think when we compromise, we are selling out. You got to get out of that notion. That's part of the political process, compromise. So um, as we're beginning, uh, we're having this, we got about two minutes left here. As we begin to talk about compromise, do you think there's any merit in this conversation that we are having right now here that's going to be aired on television? Because most time we don't like 
and our community once again don't like to discuss things of this nature publicly. Mm -hmm. Is there any merit in us doing this, having this conversation publicly? Absolutely, we got to do it publicly. We can't get in those little cliques and discuss politics. We got to bring it to the forefront. You know, we are just entering into the political process. When I say we, black people in this community, it's just been recently, last 30 years, that we just, we got into the political process. We are learning, it's a learning curve, but we really need to learn the process. And if we know the process, we can accomplish a lot. We had some politicians in this town who knew the process and they were able to accomplish things in this community. But they failed to bring people along. That's the they, they, yes, they failed to bring, they, it became personal uh, for them and personal gain for them. But they knew the process. They knew how to twist the arms and get the votes to get things done. Okay. Well, well, once again, Grady, it's always a pleasure to sit with you. Uh, we thank you very much for having us here in your studio, in your gallery here, Grady Avon Studio and Gallery. Uh, we look forward to coming back again as well as we look forward to inviting you to the program once again. And to the list, to the view and audience, you're watching Comcast Community Concerns, where we're always moving our community into the future. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Comcast Connect Live. It's